morning and welcome back to Planner Craft. I'm Natalie and today I'm going to be doing a bit of foiling and your phone is misbehaving. <laughs> so if it keeps going up and down in the corner that's why. It's <laughs> going. Your phone's just too heavy. <laughs> so I will wait a few moments for everybody to join us and find us. Please do say hi and let us know that you're watching so that you know that we are active. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've got six. Deb says morning. Morning, Deb. Okay. So, on Wednesday, you saw me do this lovely background with our Distress Oxides and Distress Inks. And I thought today it would be really nice to show how we can actually bring foil into that too. So, because there are elements which are going to be overlapping in similar tones, I thought I would use the tracing paper method that we did in the scanning video. And that way we can kind of control where our foil is going to go. So, hello Linda and morning Havana from Connecticut. Hi Havana! And welcome to Planacraft. So you get lots of fun classes. Pretty much daily. We take the occasional day off, but there's not many. Yeah. And Anne Marie says it's her first time watching as well. So, morning, Anne Marie. And welcome. So, if you are watching for the first time, please do join the group as well. Um, there's lots of extra things that go in the group after. Okay. So, I'm going to start by drawing in pencil where I want my four to go. So, I've Fix it with a little bit of masking tape somewhere where there isn't going to be too much foiling detail. And then I can concentrate on the main areas where I want my foil to go. So I'm not necessarily going to do a full solid outline because one of the benefits of this is that we can get a bit more artistic. So Gonna go round and in. Do you want to just read out the details of the stamps that I used? Really? Just there. So now I'm gonna come back along this leaf here. So the stamps that Natalie used are artisan design stamps, and it's from the Full Bloom collection. And does it have a particular name of Full Bloom? Yep, yeah, down at the bottom. N -n 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 yeah. <laughs> an enemy. <laughs> an enema. An enemy. An enema. An enemy leaves. <laughs> an enemy. <laughs> One or the other. So, if you go in the group, I've put up a, a link to the stamps as well. Because I know quite a few of you are, are loving the leaves. Get them while you can. Yep, definitely get them while you can. And they are in stock, I did check. <laughs> so I'm just going to pull out some of the veins, so I'm not going to do all of them, but some of them. Like so. So there's our first leaf. Then we can come back in and we can do the next one. Do we have a competition running at the moment? We need to do the... Um, successful challenges for the last one which we haven't done yet and we also have a challenge post that is running on our discord group so I've put up a file you can go on our discord group and download it and then we want to see what you can come up with with the file It doesn't matter how good you are, we all have something different to offer, so it's a little multi-aperture card design, so you can create it as little windows if you want to, if you just want to do it layers because you're not feeling that confident yet with using things like subtract, that's fine too. So I'm going to come around this way now and do this next big leaf. You're 
going to see now that it's getting much more kind of artistic, free flowing, and not about mimicking all of that detail and that lovely stamp. It's just highlighting a few points. And we'll come along with this bottom one, and we'll do the same here. You notice I'm not trying to do perfectly closed shapes like you might be used to doing with your scan and cut. It's just literally giving it a single line to follow. So your next choice is which nib you're going to use. Whether you want to go fine, medium or bold. Or if you're going to use the Brother Foiling Kit with a glue pen. So you can use that too. And where I think coming in front, I'm just going to do a little bit of detail just there, and there, right there, and there, like so. So you can see I'm being really loose and not going, oh, I'm drawing a leaf because that's not what I'm doing. I'm just highlighting some of the lines so that when we come to do our foiling it has a line to follow so if I take this away you can see what we've got and now if you're looking at that thinking well there's a few little areas that look a bit plain they're making the waste just pop that back on and just bring out a little bit more pretty happy with that. I'm not too bothered about making sure that our foil goes all the way around the edges of the design. So as we have this little hinge here, what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to gently peel this away. I'm going to be really, really gently. Yeah. So now we can use that to act as a hinge with it on our cutting mat. in our cutting mat and let's go my lint roller. Okay. So I'm just gonna quickly go over the top. Mm -hmm. Good to do that. There we go. Get all the dust from the other bits. <laughs> I told you it's good. We're gonna have to give it a bit of um Reinforcement, I think, to get it to stay up. <laughs> it's got the droops. <laughs> I try tightening the um, there we go. Is it going to stay? Let's get 
Yeah. Yes, please. So first thing that's going to come up is this message about the carriage. So we can just go OK. So just make sure before going OK that you haven't got a blade in your machine. The reason being that certainly both the older models, it can actually chip the blade. And there is an update available for DX models. And that's yeah. so that the rotary blade will work. Yay! Yeah. But do you want to do that on stream? Not really. No, because it, it might make it a mess, won't it? Yeah. Yeah, if anybody wants any advice on doing that, then do let us know. You can go back to okay. placing things on that. Yes, please. We should tell them. Let's. Mm. I guess let's fold it up. I'm thinking. <laughs> and Sharon says, morning. Been interested in foiling technique for. Uh, interested in foiling technique. Thanks for the video. Cool. So I tend to use the foil quill um, just because I find it's that little bit easier to use. Okay, so there's our tracing paper that we've done. I'm going to stick that tape down so that I can use it as a hinge to get my positioning right. So you want to make sure that you can lift this up without moving that tape too much and getting it back down. Okay. So lift it up and check that you can get it back down in more or less the same place before scanning because if you suddenly scan it and then you realise that it's moving then it's like ah oh, got to redo it okay so with that on there one more thing that we need to do before we get going is get our foil so if you're using the foiling kit you you can skip this stage a bit later but for the foil quill you need to have your foil ready to go now because my lines go to quite close to the edge of my card, I am going to need my fork slightly larger than my piece. And I'm going to grab my slice knife. And very carefully. I'm going to go down that edge. And this is the fun bit, trying to get it to uh, behave for this one. Full, full frame. Do that. Um, to hand. If not, don't worry. No. No, but you could use a red one. Well, I could use a red one. Go on then. Red and blue. Go. Um, you need both. Because blue fits in red. Yeah, go for the. Red. Yeah, give me the blue, and I'll use the blue. Should be able to do that without having to move my tracing paper too much. Thank you. Let's have a look very quickly. Very, very quickly. Oh, look at that. Right, let's see if we can get this on here then. So, slight change of plug. Just because I want to move it a bit. Let's move that one. And morning, Delphi. So, for those of you that are wondering what I'm using, and this is in Spoil Shield. And it's the most modern form. It's the most modern form. <laughs> So if this is something you are interested in, please let us know. Now that Ian has a bit more time to be working on it <laughs> this week, yeah. it will be coming a bit quicker to market. Okay. So the first part is the outer frame into which we have little strips that we can mount if we're working on something like 
8x8s, 10x10s. Right down to fours, but we also have a few pre made templates. So let's get the right way around. I'm going to drop this into our frame. Like so. So the idea being that when you put your piece in here and you put your foil over the top, the foil isn't going to get on your mat, so you don't get a lovely foiled mat. That is the plan. Okay, do with the other bit, the tracing bit here. <laughs> you stuck it to the side of your desk, you don't know, the other side. Hi. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Stick this to my frame now rather than my map. And this actually be very interesting. There's actually two, two red sections, isn't there? There is thing. at the moment, yeah. There's a, it looks like a DL, it's a bit bigger, isn't it? It's a, I don't know what that one is. It's an A5, I think. Big, big one. Okay, so I'm going to load in my map. Just swap it over to overhead. Uh, <laughs> close camp, I should say. Well, you do yes, scan close camp, stuff. please. Oh, uh, right. So I'm keeping my mat supported. It's not quite high enough to do it there, so I'll do it. And I'm going to go to scan because you want to scan something on our mat to use. Now you can use direct cut, but if you go to scan to cut data, you do get a few more options. So let's try direct cut first. I'm going to use the machine. It's on black and white because it's high contrast. So we've got a nice clear black outline and a white background. We're going to go start. And it's going to run for all from the map. Drop the scanner down. No, it says. <coughs> no. That's it. Okay. Let's try that again, shall we? <laughs> it it's didn't. got the. Um... Yeah, it didn't like it because it's got the shield on it. Let's do that again. Uh, no, no. And start. Yeah, it's the one option where you have to leave the scanner lever down or up whichever way it is. It oh. makes it lower. Yeah? Yeah. Because otherwise it... Catches. It catches a little bit. There we go. It's been a while since we've used this one on stream, isn't it? We've not used this one on stream because... We did do one video with it. Yes. One sneaky video. <laughs> so she needs to know as soon as they're on sale. <laughs> <laughs> right, so now we're going to take our frame and we're going to move it up oh, and in. Focus. Yeah. Right, so now you see how it's not quite got some of these details? If we pull it out, we get more because it sees the, the edge of the tape. So if you're having issues like that, then the trouble is you don't want it to foil that bit of tape. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to risk it for a biscuit. Oh. I'm going to move my tape. At least it should be stuck to the mat underneath. It should be stuck to the mat and I can always apply my tape to do my hinge in a bit. But I'm going to go back and redo it just because I wanted to make sure it gets all those lines. So again, use the machine, start, start. You're going to go, okay. Uh, 
Yeah, no, 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 uh, mommy this morning. Okay. I do hope she's feeling a bit better. So I'm going to go, okay. And now it's going to see everything bar the, the, <laughs> the trace. Now, isn't that just typical? So if it's having that issue, let's try and darken it down and see how it goes. Nope, it's not going to see it now. Naughty scanner. So I might have to pop some tape back on to get it to give you the right contrast. Try Might try colour. Might have that looking <coughs> colour. Oh, he's a bit mad, but okay. You can see me lines. We can always edit out all this other um, section that's picked up. So let's see how it goes if we shrink that in. <laughs> yeah, he's a bit. Try and get that right in there so that our red line sits inside our frame. But you want to make sure that you're not losing any of the outline if you do that. That's looking pretty good to be honest. It's got a few odd bits, but you know, they might just work with our image. So I'm going to go preview. Oh, Carol's turned up. Hi, Carol. No need for double detention. There was no stream yesterday and I, I know we missed you Wednesday. Hopefully you got my message okay. Okay. There's a special surprise. Good morning, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's an Ian here. <laughs> okay. So your next option is whether you want to add an offset mix usually we would with direct cut but because we're not actually cutting we're going to be drawing we can just go okay I can go to please select and we're going to go to draw now next we need our foil quill so you've got the battery pack in We have three four quills to choose from. And I'm going to be powering it by other means than my power bank, apparently. <laughs> okay. It's a good job I have a second option, isn't it? <laughs> I have backups over backups. <laughs> okay. So, this is going to be interesting. Now what I usually typically say is don't use your machine to power your foil quilt. Now which one should I go for today? I think I'm going to start with the medium. No, the, the foil quilt that we have in the background will work with any of the C8 models. They work in both CM and DX models. Yeah. You, want, you have a little tab on the back as well, make sure that's flush, flush against the back. Yep. Yeah. Reach to your room. That's just what I'm trying to get it to. Open me a little hatch. Yeah, the pens are going to have to move. There we go. So, I have a extension that has a USB socket in it. So that is what I'm going to use to power my quilt. Message? What message? A morning stranger. <laughs> <laughs> we sent you a, a message on Facebook yesterday, Carol. Asking if you're alright. At least I hope I sent it to you and not some random Carol. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what I'm like at the moment, that, that would be... Um, 
impossible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Had one of those days yesterday, didn't I? So, so I'm going to place in my. Oh, are we on overhead? Uh, you can see it top you can corner. Top corner but I can so I'm going to place in my artwork into my frame. It's one of the reasons why we looked at having some pre built ones, wasn't it? So yeah. that we could just drop it in. But it works the same if you use the strips as well because the strips stay in place, you just move your artwork and you've still got your frame as where it was. Yeah. I'm going to pop my foil over the top and now we need a little bit of washi. So. Okay, good to know. We're going to tape that on. Now, one of the questions we get is about the um, magnetic sheet from Real Memory Keepers. Whether you can use it. It works in the DX but not so much in CM. You have to go careful where you put your, your strips. But you can get an alternative on Amazon and do it that way. But to be honest, we've never had an issue with doing it straight onto the, the cutting mat. Okay, so mm -hmm. you want to try and get any air pockets out much as possible and you want your foil to be taut yep that's my new invention Carol. that's one of them one of them one of the many right so our draw pressure is a bit high because we used it for our embossing so as we use our medium nib we need to go down to minus four Draw speed, you want to take it down to one, so it's as slow as it can go. So it's getting plenty of heat and time to actually bond that foil to your surface. We'll go OK. And do you think it's been long enough yet? Or should I do a tap dance? <laughs> you could always explain that this is Mark II of the design, isn't it? Yeah, this is Mark II. So if you go back on some of the older videos, you'll see that we have a card and card version that we did. Yeah, it's just which, which where you can download from Buy Me Coffee. Yes, which is where the paper strips came from originally. Yeah. Um but yeah, we thought with the if it's going to be used a lot on a regular basis, the plastic version would be more sturdy and easier to use. Yeah, because I'm a bit of a foil fiend and I like doing lots of foiling. Mm. But when we <coughs> if we do put this out commercially it will come with the blanks for each of the holes. So you haven't got to worry about where you're feeling, if that makes sense. That should be plenty of time. Okay. So, let's go. Yeah, I'm just going to go careful with the cable because it's not usually where it would be. So usually what I do with foiling is I actually sit my battery pack on top of the machine so the cable goes up and out of the way. Okay. There we go. Right, if it does this, go okay. Okay. And it means that something is rucked up in the machine. In the foil cord. So it just means we need a little bit more tape. So. Something stronger. Let's go stronger. <laughs> so this masking tape we got from Amazon. And it's advertised as being low tack. It's quite the opposite. <laughs> Strong tape, isn't it? So, if something is misbehaving, you just need some of this in the machine, and it's like it isn't going to go anywhere. So, 
So the only time that we recommend using washi tape or any kind of tape in your machine is when you're foiling. The rest of the time you need to be using a, either a new cutting mat or re-sticking if you have an old one. So I've just torn that down so that we don't have it going under the rollers. You always want to make sure the path for your rollers is clear because we never want adhesive to go on those rollers. Again, the other advantage is that with this being plastic, you're not sticking that directly to your mat, you're sticking it actually to the, to the plastic in most cases. Plastic. So you won't be this next bit. Yeah. <laughs> That's only because the blanks aren't there because we didn't get the blanks on our prototype, did we? There we go. But I will ask when we have it created to have the blanks as well. Blanks okay, so take two. So we need to set to go draw again and then start. Is that it's just popped in a few minutes? It's like YouTube one. Oh, let me have a look. Let me have a look. I'll flick back to Streamlabs. Oh, we have. So, Angela asks if it's only for the SDX. No, well, it. We answered, we answered that one. Did we? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Told me. <laughs> and Sandra says, morning. Um, so you've been looking forward to your frame invention, are we able to purchase yet? No, and I would say imminently. Imminently, yes. We need to talk to um, our friend who helps us make them. Yes. So. Um, watch this space. Yeah, watch this space because there's going to be lots of new things suddenly coming online because, yeah, life has changed again. Yay! <laughs> Yes, yes. So, how many of you also have or only have a silhouette? Because I'm going to start doing a few videos with a silhouette too. Do you want to just tilt the camera? Because it's looking at the, the desk rather than the... Oh, wrong way. <laughs> Only the, the old punch. Stay. <laughs> well, really. um, <laughs> Carol says that's a good picture of the bottom of the cutting mat with the cameraman on strike again. <laughs> yeah, I'm on strike today. Yeah. Permanent. Yeah, he's permanently on strike. So, Havana has a scanner cut DX. <laughs> And it says, oh, exciting, Carl is going to be busy. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah, there's a few things that are, are going to be either sent Carl's way or uh, into the uh, laser cutter, isn't it? So, speaking of which, is there anything that you would like to see us start to stock in terms of um, laser cut chipboard, maybe? Or um, engraved wood, that sort of thing? Carol says, what is a silhouette? <laughs> so, before there was a scanning cut, and... Mm, almost about the same time as the original crickets with the cartridge, there was the craft robo, which is how I really got interested in creating SVGs and all the rest of it, except at the time it wasn't SVGs. <laughs> it's UPS files. Well, after the craft robo, they made the silhouette. And I know I'm a proud owner of a silhouette cameo for. 
which is a cutter. So it doesn't scan in the same way that the scan and cut does, um, but it does do things like automatic print and cut. So it's just a case of printing it, sticking it on the mat, and it works it out for you, which yeah, which is good, good. But there's lots of cool kits that Silhouette do that we can use with the scan and cuts too. So um, one of them is the doming kit, which I use for a blog piece that's coming out shortly. So when that comes out, have a look at that because you can use that with your scan and cut. Um, I did screen printing at the weekend, um, another silhouette kit, and that you can do with your scan and cut if you want to. And their, their kits are really reasonably priced, aren't they? You're looking at about 25 to about £30 a kit. As opposed to 90 Yeah. Um, the oh, rhinestone yeah. starter kit's out of stock at the moment, but the screen printing kit is definitely in stock. Because I was linking to it yesterday. And I'm pretty sure the doming kit's still in stock too. You'll be asking for the rhinestone kit. I may ask for the rhinestone kit at some point in the future. <laughs> It depends what my titles are for my next pieces. Mm. Eagerly waiting to see. How's it doing? Got two yeah. minutes left to go. What is a doming kit? Okay, a doming kit, can I, if I'm quick, can I flash it on screen? Really quick. Right, here you go. I'm on over it, aren't I? Yeah. yeah. So, if we look here, you can see that it's got a raised resin finish to the stickers. So they've become like little. And it's probably easier to see on the key ring, actually. So, if I do that, you can see that you have a big dome across the surface of your sticker. So I use um, laser printable vinyl, but it, what you use depends on what printer you have. And that's all I can show you. <laughs> Even that's probably a bit more naughty. Yeah. Yeah, so, does cool. so does a Silhouette 4 have an inbuilt scanner? Not in the same way that the scan and cut does. Um, it literally has a scanner that can pick up registration marks that it puts on a print. And it does it that way. And um, you have the there's a, a pick scan mat as well, where you actually photograph the mat that you can use. It does come with a built-in roll feeder, though. Yeah, it comes with a built-in roll feeder. So if you do a lot of vinyl work, rather than having to pay out an extra, is it eighty for the roll feeder at the moment? Whether it's the new version or the old version. The silhouette actually has it built in and it pops out from a little tray in the bottom of the machine. Uh, is there a video on the doming kit and the screen kit? Uh, yeah. Not yet. <laughs> but there will be. <laughs> I'm literally waiting for the blog piece to go up and then I'll show you all how to do it. Especially given that now we have Ian. <laughs> I will be able to actually do that one a little bit easier because there are quite a few um, safety things to bear in mind with resin. Um, so it's one of those where we'll probably do it in an afternoon. It'll be a, a nice, nice, afternoon, nice long afternoon laid back. Okay, so. Let's do the reveal. And gently pull that back. And don't tell me I stuck that upside down. <laughs> oh dear. Oh well. <laughs> oh, my I had a feeling I'd go and do that. And I thought, no, 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 no. Looked on screen, thought, no, that's right. Oh dear. Hey ho. There we go. But you can see the idea. And it would have been in the right place if somebody had put the piece of card in the right way. <laughs> I'm having a bad week. <laughs> Not my fault. 
So there you go. What does Andrew say? We have a nice foiled piece. So pressure is important with a foil quill. So if you're working with the fine nib, it's minus six. If you work with a medium nib, it's minus four. And if you go with a bold nib, it's minus two. Um, Sandra says, my mojo went AWOL for quite some time, so I wanted to get back into the DX and use the foil impact that's been patiently sitting on the shelf waiting. Hurry with the frame template, please. <laughs> So the foil is actually one that we stock, um, in case you're wondering where we get the foil from. So it's not the We Are Member Keepers foil, it's our, our own foil, which is nice. <laughs> that's also available on the... Yep, also on our Buy Me A Coffee, so that's www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash planner craft and you'll find them all on there. So um, there's a little taster kit as well. The background Natalie created on Wednesday, Carol. So if you want to go back to Wednesday's video, you'll see the you'll see the background. Um, Natalie designed stamps. Distress oxides for the outline that we then spritz with water, and then we ink blended over the top. And I actually quite like that. I did that. Hmm. It's like it's gone over layer leaves. I like that. Simple things. Now what I was going to do originally was I was going to fold a word across that same background but I think I'm going to change my mind because, you know, prerogative and all that. And I think that's going to be a little bit too long. I'm just going to trim a little bit off the bottom of my card if my trimmer can manage it. So I'm using some ultra thick card for this next bit. And let's see if it can cope. This says, yeah, she has the first gen 12 by 12 cameo. I'm so disappointed that I couldn't, it couldn't live up to my... Oh, to the, to the, uh, craft row row, yeah. It's a shame that it's sitting on the shelf not being used, though. It might be worth doing a firmware upgrade and trying again. Oh, thank you, Sandra. We put a lot of work into choosing the colours that we do for foil, and I want to do another pack because we've got kind of the cools, haven't we? We've got the purples, the blues. And did we, did we, was it a green or a teal that we put in teal, it? Teal, wasn't it? Yeah. So it'd be nice to do like some sort of warmer colours so for autumn, the wouldn't it? Two purples it? and. Uh... Or did we put the white in it instead? White, I think. It was the white because we had the rose gold, gold, gunmetal, silver, and. What's the other one? There's nine in total. <laughs> That's yeah, your the brain. White, then. Yeah. The two purples and the two blues. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go home. And you can either use a word that's built into the machine, or if you have some of the Real Memory Keepers USBs, you can use those instead. Let's have a look. Should I pick one off the machine? So I can go through USBs. And let's go autumn, because, well, it goes with the theme. So, size-wise, it's currently at 150 mil, which is definitely going to be too big. But if I bring in a ruler, then I can look at my size. I have some groovy grip on them, my ruler, if you're wondering why I've got some random piece of paper stuck to the back of it. Chocolate. Oh, yeah, we had the chocolate, yeah, the. Um, gunmetal. The gunmetal's the chocolate one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to go for about 9 centimetres. So that's 90 millimetres. Please. Okay. Oh, our favourite, she said. There we go. So we're going to go down to 90 and set. 
we're going to bring it into the middle of the mat. We're going to go to edit and then we can rotate freely. So we're going to go and rotate that in 90 degrees. Okay. Okay. Okay again. Now we're going to do a background scan. And that's so that we can see the placement of our card on our mat. Again, the photo feels handy for that, isn't it? Because it gives you a name. It's not yours. So I'm going to go move that water now. Onto our card. Yep. Don't want to go too close to the edge, just in case there's. Well, do you want to swap it to the other one? Go for the bold. And we can go and use our same bit of foil again. Now it does mean that there will be occasional patches that miss. I don't mind that because when we cut it out we can either fix it or we can go for a contrasting colour so that it has that leaf texture still in the word. And just feeling where my, the edge of my frame is, just making sure that it's all comes where it needs to be. So there's the edge of my frame. Just down there, and our words are going to sit right up there. Um, Sandra met the chocolate purple, as in it, like the Cadbury's one. So oh, the right, nice, okay. warm, yeah. warm, warm, deep purple. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I did think when you said chocolate purple, I'm thinking. Surely that's the Cadbury's purple. Other manufacturers are just available. <laughs> Have you locked that in? Nope. Have you? <sighs> but yes, the, the purples are um, my favourites too. Um, the one was more or less the same shade as our old car, wasn't it? So, yeah. so it we has a. like a little um, sample pack we have like stuck to card or something just so we can go and here things. it is yeah. yeah we can do that like what we've done with the the ring here we can do that with the foils yeah, can't we'll we take those down and put the, our foils up there for you uh the other thing to mention while i'm here and while i'm waiting for my quill to heat is that we do still have the lucky dip bags available i believe on buy me coffee too um or if not just give me a a little nudge and I will put that back up there. Uh, Angela is holding out for an SDX. Don't know if it will be the 1200 or the newer model that's premiered on the 4th of August, just wait for UK price tag for a new model. My advice would be Angela, either wait for the new model, would be my first choice. If you really can't wait then look at the 22 or the, dare I say, the Pro. Um, just because it's got the newer feed. Um, most issues with the feed we've, we've been able to fix, but we have had one that was just <sighs> unfixable, wasn't yes. it? Didn't want to play. Didn't want to play. Um, is Ian wagging work today? Um, I, I, I'll message you, Carol. Because <laughs> Ian's wagging work today and, well, yeah. <laughs> For the foreseeable. Um, hmm. So, hence we will be moving things back up to speed for, for Planner Craft instead. Yay! So, be warm it should be warm enough. So, I'm going to go to Edit, Object Edit, and I am going to fill it in. So, turn on Fill. Check your fill pattern, so you want it to look like it's the solid one, which is zero one. You have your fill line spacing, which is currently on 0.4mm. Could probably go a little bit bigger, couldn't it? That moment. Okay. 
You heard that. <laughs> he said it. <laughs> okay. And okay again. Okay. And we're going to go to draw. So the reason that we turn on fill is so it doesn't just go around the outline. If it's a smaller font and you know what it's going to do is just go dot 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 then usually what I do is I will turn fill it off and just let the quill do the work. But with something like this where it's a bit bolder, I need that fill on. Now when it says attach appropriate holder, I've got one of Cole's um, adapters on it. Just because I managed to get my wheel memory keepers one stuck on my middle quill. So <laughs> I actually find these much easier to get in than that anyway. So I'll go OK and start again. OK. Let's go. Ooh, Ed. Not the goat. Show me the, the um, overhead over here. <laughs> Because it's right there. Just turn it off. Uh, okay. Sandra says, "Oh, flip. Sorry to hear rework, but it's lovely to hear us both." Mm. It's, it's nice right. when we can stream together, isn't it? Yeah. I'm still looking, aren't I? Yeah, you're still looking, and we'll we'll do the best that we, that we can to to make Planet pay, won't we? Mm -hmm. And cope. Oh, talking of which, I'm doing really well with the new book, so I'm hoping that's going to come out for Planet Craft's birthday in September. Fingers crossed. So I'm about halfway through. And there's lots of illustrations that I've been doing. Huh? Notebooks. Oh yes, notebooks. The notebooks are starting to, to ship and arrive. And thank you to all of those that have made um, positive comments on the group. Have you ever foiled onto fabric? I have foiled onto faux leather, um, which has obviously a plasticky kind of finish to it. And that worked really, really well. Um, I not sure that the foil quill would work onto fabric. Um, you may be better off using something like a foil glue and doing it that way. The other way that you can do it is with the um, toner foil, isn't it? Mm. Like your t-shirt. Yeah. I'll have to show his t-shirt online that it's cool. Um, but it does work better if you have a heat press, um, which we don't have yet. So it's going to have to go on the back burner so you, you can save up enough for it. Unless somebody kindly donates one. <laughs> um, they stop the same one that Trim and Craft do. The the happy happy press is it? Yeah. Yeah. God, it's back in again today. I know they're keen, aren't they? Yeah. But yes, pointing onto faux leather is really cool, and you can make some really nice bags with it. So I did myself a little planner bag um, that I could put my planner in and a pencil case and go here there and everywhere um don't think we've got it anymore in oh. i haven't good. seen it since since we moved here so mm. don't know where it is but it's in the book so it's immortalized in the book it's in the crafters yearbook for those of you that have it uh i think it's it probably is about august actually so it's probably or was it the fabric one? It might have been the fabric one, so that was May, I think. Yeah. So the other thing I, I, I'm considering bringing back is the, the magazine as well. Oh, there we go. And let's have a look at what we've got. So, 
Da, 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 da. That looks quite cool with the leaf fruits. I like that. It's cool, isn't it? And then what I'm thinking is. Oh, and Carol thought she was late. Tracy's just woke up. Oh, Tracy! <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to remove my frame. I'm going to remove the foil quill and let that start to cool down. Goes the other way. Just because this is slightly thicker card, I'm thinking I'm going to just tap this down. So the card that I'm using is the, is it 580? The really thick yes, one that we got. Yeah. And we got it for a workshop we haven't done yet. So watch this space. Be enough, I think, because it's quite strong that one anyway. And I'm going to go for my standard auto blade because it's thicker. Okay, I'm going to drop that in there. Okay. So I'm going to go. Okay. Please select cut. And go into the settings. Now, usually at this point, if I was cutting normal card, I would take it down to minus nine and go from there. But I think for this one, shall I go to auto, Ian? Yeah, I would. Just because it is so thick. Let it do it itself. Yeah. It'll probably cut around it twice. And I might just slow it down, actually. Go right down to one. And off we go. So, we've almost got the entire DT in, so, for, again, but that's fine. Um, for all our newbies, we have a DT that also helps us out with doing things like samples for members projects, because we do a members project each month, and they are... Tracy, Linda and Deb. And so, Louise when she's here. And Louise when she's here. <laughs> but, um, bless her, she's, she's got issues at the moment. So, if you have a question, and for whatever reason I am not available, and Ian's not available, then usually Deb, Tracy or Linda will be able to help. Tracy is our Australian resident, isn't she? Yep, so out of hours is Tracy. <laughs> and Louise is more cricket, so if you have a cricket, then you can ask Louise or Tracy, because Tracy also has a cricket. So I thought, well, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll fill out the, the yeah, group and I will have a silhouette so that I can answer all questions silhouette. <laughs> See, that is so good, he even knows how many times the uh, <laughs> water plate's going to want to go round. <laughs> Cal says, is that when she's not in bed? <laughs> not Tracy. <Yeah. laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I have to say, we have a lovely group, don't we? We do. Zero drama. No, because we kick that out of the door. Yeah. <laughs> when you join, it'll ask you three questions. If you answer them all, then you get in. <laughs> and tick the box. Oh, yeah, and tick the box. There's a little tiny box that says that you agree to the rules of the group. And it's easy to blink and miss it. <laughs> Tracy's trying to keep UK tight. <laughs> Bless. I think we, we come to the conclusion we'll just go whatever time we can. <laughs> Don't forget you're back again. So far, right? Yes, I am back at 10. So uh, once I've cut this out, 
I will hop offline for a little bit just to swap over my desk so that I can get messy mats and things. And then we will be back on Pretty Gets Gritty, who I DT for. Um, and I'm finishing off my altered tin. Okay, so let's see if it's worked. Oh, that looks promising. So let's gently peel away our tape. So I'm going to keep one attached as a hinge just in case. But look at that. And there we go. Peel that away. Now, I always use a metal spatula because I just find it easier and less damage to the card. And it does look good. Oops, gosh. So all I've got to do is pop out the centre of me. Okay. And we have a lovely, thick, fine word. Look at that. Ta-da! And it's boiled. I want to move the mat and we'll just show it. I'll just move the camera back up. Okay. So, just so you can see it in the place. I might just do a little colour version as well, just to help border underneath it so if you've got like a, a strip of your translucent you could pop it up on that so that you're creating that bit of contrast so just let you cut a strip and put your sentiment back on top and I really like that mm. looks lush <laughs> there you go and thank you Sandra Thank you, Linda, and we will see you back on Pretty Gets Critty at 10am, where I'm finishing off an altered tin using offcuts. So there's going to be fragments of die cuts and all sorts of things. So, see you then. Bye for now. Bye, everybody.